Hey guys, welcome back to Twitch's Kerbal Space Program, where we are joining Rich Mel as he's trying to put himself into a nice circular orbit around the surface of the moon. This is, of course, as he's trying to finish up his last mission. Uh, the mission consisted of three contracts, and look at that beautiful Kerbin rise there. Absolutely fucking majestic. We are just finishing up this final mission, as I have said. We have just finished collecting four gravitational... Uh, survey datas on the surface of the moon using of course the gravioli detector that we had actually attached to a rover and it turns out there are many reasons why the rover wouldn't work but one of them being that i just left the brakes on the levels of stupid that i feel from that particular situation is uh, quite immense i have made a maneuver node here that's going to put rich Mal into a perfect return orbit thankfully once we leave the sphere of influence from the moon after doing this the um periapsis of his orbit around Kerbin is actually low enough that we end up going back into the atmosphere as you can see here I'm taking great pains to make sure it is down in deep enough into the atmosphere that the aero braking will bring us back and with the alarm set I think we should go and uh, watch the two bits of debris that we've set off on a collision course here mainly because well I like watching my debris hit the surface make sure that you know my, I keep my system clear uh, one of the main things that I, I do, I'm starting to have trouble with is the number of flights that are actually running on this save file. Now, it's been running since uh, Point .90 came out, or at least a week after Point .90 came out, and I've got something like 100 different flights on the go. So maybe at some point we're going to have to go around and do some cleaning up of the system. But until that time, what we're going to do is just watch these things come slamming into the floor there. And let's go talk about what we're actually doing today because whilst Rich Mal is coming home completely unaided we have a lot of other things that we're going to do not least of which is trying to work on space planes and I can tell you now by the end of today's episode I am going to have a working space plane. So after dealing with that debris I came out to the tracking centre just to actually to try and like locate Solomon's arrow so we could follow it back but I did notice this pink line around Kerbin here I was like hey even though my space planes are just absolutely terrible at the moment maybe maybe they're good enough to put us at like somewhere in orbit around Kerbin. So we went over to the uh, mission control centre here and had a, had a word with Gene you're right man how's it going and spotted this or this satellite placement orbit here this is this is the one that it was putting it into a polar orbit around Kerbin I think this is well within our capabilities so let's get over and uh, plan things out in the space center and what we're going to do here is just leave the space plane on the runway waiting for the Kerbal Space Center to come into a position with the rotation of Kerbin underneath our uh, projected target orbit um, which, which should be easy enough obviously if I want to put myself into a polar orbit I have to leave north from underneath that polar orbit. So as is my way, whilst I was looking around waiting for things to line up, I got very bored and thought I'd go and see what the autumn leaf is doing, mainly because, we, if you remember, we had just sent this adrift into the inner solar system and it wasn't really doing all that much. But if we have a look here, we're actually getting quite close to a couple of encounters here. So I'm going to take a little bit of time messing around with maneuver nodes and trying to figure out how we can get like an even closer encounter. So exactly three orbits ahead, we get like what I consider to be the closest approach to Eve. So if I just kind of mess around a little bit here, we might be able to actually get a full on approach. Unfortunately, nothing really direct presents itself within like a couple of pl plays with the uh, with the maneuver node. Obviously. The Autumn Leaf being such an early and old uh, vessel, we don't really have all that much Delta V to play around with. So I'm trying to look for the most efficient routes possible. And uh, having a muck around, I kind of find one just about here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set up this one ready to go. And it might be a little way off and we might actually be able to get something a little bit closer at some other point. But this is the best we can do, so it's kind of going to have to be the best we can do. Obviously, with the amount of time that's going to pass between now and then, and there's going to be a lot of time warping because I like to do a lot of missions between now and then, I have a feeling things are probably going to uh, drift out of sync a little bit. But if we set an alarm clock, do what we can do when we can do it, and just try and nail it down closer from there on. So like some crazy board, but ultimately powerful Time Lord, we will accelerate our way through, uh, is it until midday? Well, at least until the uh, appropriate alignment uh, occurs, and then come and jump our way back down towards our space vessel here. Um, one of the main troubles I had is obviously where I'm trying to keep everything lined up. I couldn't quite click on top of the uh, the vessel that I was going for here, so it was a little bit little bit awkward but like most almost anything in my space program is a little bit awkward but anyway back down to the surface we're going to take Aldrin's chariot here for a little bit of a flight now obviously this is not the one that I promised will be working later on I feel that there are several issues with this craft 
uh, that just yeah there were just like lots of issues with this craft that maybe we would do better just to start with a complete blank slate but for now for this vessel or at least for this mission it will definitely do we know this thing can get up we know that it can put things in orbit and that is all we really need to do here so we do a little bit of a barrel roll or at least we did a little bit of a barrel roll and then we realize wait hang about we're not supposed to be going east we're actually supposed to be going uh, north here so after a little while we take a bit of a northward turn and hopefully line our trajectory up at least in a semi-parallel fashion obviously uh not being able to see the projected target orbit is actually a little bit awkward when you're down on the surface here now all i could really do was go right well it's going to be in a north polar orbit so we wait until we're a little bit close and then just head north and, and try our best to get up there now you can see here we are screaming away at like 24 25 kilometers uh, above here and even with um, a little bit of like tapping on the throttle though it turns out not enough tapping on the throttle uh, we don't really get above 25 26 kilometers until we have to fire up our rocket engines here but once those rocket engines are fired and the beautiful stars as we uh, break our way through the top of the atmosphere come out to, to play with us we know that like almost all the atmospheric drag has been reduced to at least negligible amounts so we don't really have to worry too much about it and this is really what space planes are all about is getting up to this point and being able to carry on going so the only thing really left to do is make a quick circularizing burn up at apple apps uh, i say quick but obviously this takes a little bit of time because we had to wait for our peri apps to get up and then whilst cruising our way over the north pole it's time to deploy said tiny satellite now the reason i've chosen up over the poles is because when i was looking at the projected target orbit i realized that the apple apps is up over the north pole and the peri apps is over the south pole maybe the other way around but the main point is those two nodes were over the poles so i want to be making all my major maneuvers around the poles uh, so a quick quick double burst here just to make sure that we got rid of um, got ourselves out of the way of the flight path of the space plane i mean that would be quite horrendous here uh, and then my major concern as always is making sure my nodes match up so i wanted to make sure that the peri apps or the apple apps whichever one that was of my target orbit matches up with the peri apps or apple apps it'll be apple apps in this case um of my post maneuver burn orbit match up that, that's really what we're going for here okay one of the problems that i kept on having with the aldrin's chariot and this is constant and one of the reasons why it's like coming out of uh, circulation for use here is i kept on running out of rocket fuel that i now have no way of getting this home without giving it a push and whilst i am an expert of the get out and push it regime in space flight it, it's really not a fun way to do things okay so i've got an alarm set for for tinny tim well it's not tinny tim it's oliver but whichever satellite it is i've got an alarm set for down at the south pole so we can make a brief push up and push our apple apps up to the same height as the peri apps on the predicted orbit here i went a little bit over the top but the main point is to make sure that those extreme nodes match up in altitude a quick renaming ceremony is never out of order once again we are going to name it to oliver as we have tinny tim out towards minmus way uh, and then we're going to make a small like inclination correction burn here just to make sure that my apple apps matches up with the peri apps there you can see that is absolutely beautiful and we're going to set up a small maneuver node just to complete the the circularization burn so after getting out and pushing four or five times with my kerbals we eventually get low enough down into the atmosphere that we can put, uh, make a small landing over on the poles here i particularly enjoyed the way that the moon was visible just for a little bit there and we watched it set down into the atmosphere uh, and i'm now looking for a uh, landing zone well i say i'm looking for a landing i'm looking for a landing zone whilst trying to keep everything in balance because obviously this this plane was designed with a lot of fuel on board uh, and now that fuel is not on board which it was a little bit vexing but it was dealable uh, whilst we were up in the air and it just could move everything around a little bit uh, and we put down for a rather nice nice landing on the pole there really well done okay so we come back out to oliver and literally we just have this last little burn to make here shouldn't take too long at all indeed uh, a delta v of 410 with these engines here and the size of the craft takes next to no time at all we just need to wait for the uh, the appropriate time which is what this game is all about waiting for the appropriate time so that we can like push everything up and make sure everything is matching um maneuver nodes don't really do too well when you're trying to get everything down to this precision precisionness now so what i'm doing is watching my apple apps watching the apple apps of the of the actual target orbit and making sure they're close enough together that they actually work now here i'm lining up all my nodes and i, I think they're close enough so I'm, I'm not quite sure what's going wrong here and looking at everything it turns out that uh, once again i've done something incredibly stupid i have not included an antenna 
on my tiny satellites. There is no communicatron at all on this. Let me just let's just take a moment and appreciate just how stupid that is. I mean, it's not quite up to my rival wouldn't work because I left the brakes on kind of standard or stupid, but it is pretty stupid. And we'll have a quick look around here. Yeah, no, nothing at all. So, um, rescue mission then, right? So I'm putting a rocket together because I'm a little bit done with space planes. You may have noticed that I'm not doing incredibly well. And at this point, I just want to go out and fix some stuff. Uh, but one of the things that I do want to point out is a, a slight glitchy nature that I have here. Uh, so whilst I'm mucking around, I'm just kind of trying to come up with different ways to actually make this plane look. Uh, not this plane, this rocket look. Uh, I end up doing some weird things with these fuel tanks here and end up with this strangeness here. Which I decide to keep because, hey, it looks good and, well, why not? Really, I mean, it's let me do it so it's a bit glitchy but we're going to stick with it. With explanations of the ship's funny shape aside, let's talk about all the major milestones that need to happen to make this repair mission happen. The first thing is obviously we need to make the Kerbal Space Center line up with the uh, projected target orbit. We're going to go fix the second probe first and then we'll go out to Minmus and fix that one out there. Uh, the next thing is we need to make sure we fly south not north. I did mess that up once and went the wrong way but a quick revert and that was all good. And then thankfully Fortune decided that I'd paid enough for this mission and we got a rendezvous uh, immediately. We went straight up and then when we got close enough we just used our um, targeting reticule on the nav ball. We uh, hit the, the, the retrograde for there and made a nice circular burn and literally within one flight got immediately there straight away. I'd like to take a minute to sing the praises of the uh, Kerbal Attachment winch system here. Uh, it completely removed the need for any precision docking. I just flew out with a Kerbal, attached the winch line, reeled it in and then did all the repairs on the front of the vessel that I needed. We then released the uh, newly repaired satellite onto its own orbit and thankfully because we'd not gone too far we still met all the criteria of the contract and managed to do it just like that which was amazing. We then picked up the satellite again because hey we don't want to just leave out space junk out there and thought we'd maybe maybe take it back with us try and get some money back stuff like that uh, and then we need to make our way to Minmus which we shall do with the help of the mun munular transfer there if we notice like I got down real close and managed to get a sort of a, an inclination change using almost no delta V there which I thought was amazing that's definitely what it's all about uh, and we have a little bit of a, a maneuver to do close into the moon but that definitely puts us then onto a minimum encounter then because my space program is like super busy I need to go over to Galanichi and send it off onto a new course just so we can get that close mo uh, moho encounter so coming back to the mission in hand we make our moon encounter inclination change burn Whew, that's a bit of a mouthful. And then finally, after setting, uh, sending out all these repair missions and stuff, we put the mission that we're going out to repair into its correct orbit around Minmus. Yes, that's right, we sent them a repair mission out before we'd even got the actual mission into place. We make our low manual altitude correctional burn that puts us in on target for making our way over to Minmus, where upon entering the sphere of influence we make the same manoeuvres that we did around Kerbin. We make sure we match up our orbits with the, uh, the vessel we want to repair, we go out with the winch, we winch it in, make our repairs, send it off on its own orbit, pull it back for bringing back to Kerbin. That was a nice healthy side mission. I quite enjoyed actually doing it. The uh, the money encounters was uh, was my highlight of that being able to use like such little amounts of delta v for getting out to where we want to go. Uh, yeah, by by far the best thing. I also had a money encounter on the way back uh, that saved me a whole load of delta v as well. Uh, trying to come down now level. Uh, I'm I'm trying to see what which of the parachutes will make us come level because obviously if I try and do them all the extra weights on the probes on the front there are putting me nose down and the last thing I wanted to do was break Matford and all the the probes but with a little bit of a push we managed to get everything fine now i promised you a working space plane by the end of today's episode and this is now to the end of today's episode here is a working space plane uh and with that i will see you next time when we're going to actually work on this properly i'm afraid i have completely run out of time and i will see you then when we're going to do that